Hey guys. This is the three gossips. Oh, everybody brought it. This is sheep rock. See the sheep? Two big A's here. <laughs> Did you film the flipping rocks? Okay, we better get going, guys. I'm looking for an excuse. When I was a little kid, I don't remember it much. Well, see, we were here in November. It was, just, it was still warm. I mean, we we had a picnic lunch. I feel like I played a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> was there any snow? Huh. You, there was a little bit of a nippy feeling in the air. I mean, you know, you had to be in the sunshine to feel really comfortable. Uh huh. But it you was could tell it was winter. It was, yeah, it was gorgeous. But there wasn't any snow or anything yet. But I guess they do get it here, according to those slides. Yeah, I remember hearing on the news that it, it always announced when it, when they got snow down here. Isn't that amazing how that does that with the leaves those open? I know. <laughs> I don't think it'll matter if you do get in the picture. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you weren't supposed to get me. You wait, you'll get yours. <laughs> so when we get to Sheila's, then we can call Maya. Yeah. Get an update. Yeah. By then they'll probably know something. It'll be late. I mean, no, it's late enough in the day where they. So this is better, Kodak moment. 
Take a picture of that arch over there, okay? Okay. Yeah, hey, I'm doing it. I'm All taking right. a picture of that arch. All right, I got some footage.
Okay. Hovenweep Castle, built about the same time as the European castles, about A.D. 1200. Hovenweep Castle was home for several farming families. This ruin has two D-shaped towers. The best preserved one is to your right. The outer walls of Hovenweep Ca Castle are very thick, double and triple coursed stone, and the only ground level doorway opens into the canyon, where these people worried about defending their home. Home. Were these people worried about defending their home? Some of the towers and room blocks were for astronomical observations. In a farming economy such as this one, the people needed to know when to plant and when to harvest, so they placed great emphasis on the passage of the seasons. Archaeologists have observed certain alignments of the setting sun through some of the small windows here at Hovenweep Castle, especially on the first day of summer and the first day of winter. Yeah, they had this at Chaco County too, where they did the towers for astronomical reasons. This check dam, rebuilt in 1974 by archaeologists, is on the site of an ancient dam. Dams like this one kept water from running too fast down the canyon and collected valuable silty soil behind it. It was because of these dams that the Anastasia could farm in this area, even though it received only 10 inches of moisture a year. Building long series of check dams. And these washes conserve valuable space, soil, and water in this desert environment. Yes. Holman Weep House was one of, once one of the largest pueblos here in the Square Tower group. The part you see here is still standing because it was built on solid rock. You can see the rest of Holman Weep's house to your left. Those scattered stones were once oh. yeah, right over there. Were once high walls. The Anasazi were fine builders. Often they shaped the stones by pecking away at them with stone tools. They put small stones in the mud mortar to cut down on shrinkage as the mortar dried. Over the walls, the people put a smooth coat of mud plaster. Looks like maybe some See, yeah, it makes a version for everybody has those down here underneath the cliff. And that and so you have a cliff dwelling where it's built right in they have the back wall or it's made into the cliff. Uh -huh. And then they just did all the stuff on the front. Is that a some walls? Yeah, see that's the way it doesn't make a version. We should be coming to four, but there's no number right here. Good shade there. Yeah, so the one we're going to tomorrow. Under the Ooh, cliff. Might be cold proof. Yeah, I think that's uh, poop. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It looks like riding though, doesn't it? It looks like riding, yeah. It's known for its towers. Some towers are square like this one. Others are D-shaped, circular or oval. Some in the canyon bottoms near a spring. 
Some are built into rock room blocks and others are connected to ceremonial chambers. No one is certain what their function was. Archaeologists suggest that the towers were used for astronomical observations, for signaling, or for watching for enemies. Some may simply have been homes. Before AD 1200, the people had been living scattered out over much of the whole nation top. But by AD 1200, clusters of buildings, often with towers, were centered around the heads of canyons. By AD 1300, everyone had left Hovenweep, just as they had left Mesa Verde, Chaco Canyon, and other Anasazi centers. If the towers were built, kept in mind the security, the scarcity of water and of available farmland over the, after the centuries of intensive farming. Could the people of Square Tower Canyon have been defending their spring and farmlands from people in the next canyon? Unfortunately, we have no definite answers. For now, each curious individual must make up his own mind. If I did that, where I came up here, And I camped right there, down the, in the canyon. In the canyon. And I camped out here, Sheila. Like, I mean, where there's rattlesnakes yeah, and poisonous yeah. lizards and stuff, you know. I'd get my... There's a big one up on the edge that dropped down into the canyon for the dinner this morning. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Right over there. It's like a well or something, or a tower. No, there's no bucket on it. Right? It is probably no tower. It is a two-story rectangular building with no apparent room divisions inside. It has an abundance of small peepholes going through the walls at unusual angles. Perhaps they were arranged for optimum ventilation of the building, or perhaps they were portholes to scout the horizon. What was that again, Sheila? At Mesa Verde, I think at Mesa Verde, but I know at Chaco Canyon they replicate the roofs. But they you. figured they had wood roofs, huh? Yeah, they, they drug in their poles from the mountain. Oh, yeah. And laid the poles across the roof. See, a lot of those holes, too. See those holes? Yeah. A lot of them sometimes will have a, um, a pole sticking out of them, uh -huh. and that was their roof. But this isn't going up high enough. That yeah. could have been a story, though. Anyways, yeah. they'd pack it with the mud and with the branches with really? the poles. And that Fine was handiwork place. there. Notice the little rocks they used for yeah. filler. If we were able to get down close too, sometimes you can see their hand imprint huh. as they pack the mud around the, the rocks. Huh. That's okay, there. Okay, Twin Towers. Yeah. The two structures we today call Twin Towers are not really towers at all. They are large two-story apartment houses containing a total of 16 rooms. The North Tower still has its original wooden lentils. Lentils? over the first and second story doorways and the oh, Anasazi used wood and stone interchangeably for doorway lentils. That's uh, like the part you step on to go through the door. You know? You're... What's that? I don't know, maybe they'll tell. Um, in sha shape and architecture the two towers are individual. Each tower conforms almost exactly to the shape of the boulder it was built upon. Thin slabs of sandstone mixed with large blocks gave a layered look to the walls of the North Tower while the South Tower is similar to all other Hovenweep masonry with bread loaf shaped stones of uniform size throughout the building. The large circular basin in the rock at, rocks rocks at, at your feet. Oh, rocks at your feet was not carved by the Anasazi. It is a Tinahuta. Oh, okay. Spanish Tinahuta. for little water pot. They are formed by water in standing pools left after rain, dissolving the calcite or limey cement that binds the sand grains together. After the water evaporates in the hot sun, wind removes the grains of sand, leaving behind a steep sided circular flat bottom depression. That's on our cliff rock right there. Uh -huh. Shoot, we saw a lizard walk across. Those in the days before uh, species and fat boys. I had to walk over and we went through that exercise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, because um, they didn't have horses or anything. The ones at Chaco Canyon, you'll yeah. be totally amazed. They, they'll, they think that um, 
like in one of those civilizations, one of the places you're in, they say, you know, 500 people live there. We've got like, you know, six, seven buildings around, <laughs> but they're five stories high. And in each story, there's like three. Okay. <laughs> five. Five. still won't mean there's much there aren't some people in it. Oh, oh. oh how dumb. Look, there's Grandpa. Oh, look at the soot. There's Grandpa. There's a fire. That's what it looks like. She doesn't like me. <laughs> no, stop it. Where's the jug of water? I have it. I'm going to pour some on her. Look, she's hot. Oh, is you hot? Kevin, you might get a little wet here. He likes the water. Oh, that's fun. Look, look, you gonna show me the hole? Guess not. Go up there and move that grass, Spencer. Yeah, you don't know what kind Where'd of he other side he of the rock on that out. Move, you can see the tail. Oh yeah. Get it to move again. Just a minute. I gotta get him. Oh. I ain't got him in here yet. There he is. See him? Yeah. Want me to get him to move? Yeah, I just throw a rock over there somewhere. Oh, he moved. Did I get him? Oh, there he is. Where is he? There he is. Oh, it isn't the breeze so good. Wildlife. See? Oh, he's not my feet. I'm sure it's not Okay, stronghold house and tower. Perched precariously atop its boulder foundation, stronghold house seems to have been built as a fortress. Stronghold house is really only the top story of a huge pueblo built on the slope below. The rubble from this pueblo lies everywhere. Entrance to Stronghold House was gained by climbing up the pecked hand and toe hold still visible in the rock below the door, or perhaps by climbing a short wooden ladder. Notice that the stone building blocks here are exceptionally well made. Notice also the two distinct sections of the building. Each section contains about two rooms. Strong, um. Stronghold Tower to your right, a short distance, is interesting in that part of its floor was built after over a crevice in the cliff. The Anasazi laid a large log as a bridge over the crevice and built part of the tower on this log. You can still see one hand-pecked notch in the cliff where the end of the log rested. Sometime over the last 700 years, the log rotted and collapsed, taking most of the walls of the tower with it to the bottom of the canyon. They have mulky steps to get up in the... They, they um, often in their cliff dwelling houses, they live on the cliff, chiseled in hand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The women would put stuff on their head and be able to shimmy up there. They'd have their kids strapped on them and shimmy up there. And make it harder for the, for the enemy to get in, too. <laughs> First, they'd have to find them. This black junk? A lizard. Where? I don't see him. Oh, dude. Oh, Kevin's gonna grab it. Oh! <laughs> you. Uh, not as much as the half of my brother. He got, well, he got sprayed. He had to burn uh. his clothes. Uh. <laughs> it attracts him. It might be green, and that's why they're supposed to. I don't know. Do you think that's a doorway or a window? Doorway, I imagine. Do I got to see? It doesn't look as tall as yeah. Hey, ready? Oh, yeah. okay, while mo uh, this is a unit type house. While most of the major ruins at Hoban Week date, date to the Pueblo Three period, 
That's AD 1100 to 1300. Unit type house is older, dating from Pueblo times AD 900 to 1100. It was probably continually inhabited and modified until almost AD 1300. It is called unit type house because early archaeologists felt that such small pueblos with one kiva and a few living and storage rooms made up a unit of one family group or clan. The larger Pueblo villages were then made up of several of these family units. Unit type houses, single kiva, um, has exceptionally fine masonry. It uh, has the same features found in kivas in the Mesa Verde cliff dwellings, plus a side doorway which leads into what was probably a small storage room. The room to the east of the kiva was four ports, has four ports in its eastern wall. Two of them were used to indicate the dates of the summer and winter solaces. Soltis. Yeah, Here's a that house would look like. Is that a kiva in the middle with the circle? I think so. But that plant would be Open looking Open what up, Sheila? The prickly one down there. Smara. Hey. Yeah, yucca. That's what that is. That prickly, really prickly one. Juniper is what those trees are called. It says the Anasazi used the wood for building houses and kids and for firewood they used the shaggy bark as insulation on their leggings and moccasins in winter. For bedding for infants, for bedding, for infants diapers and for tinder when building fires. The blueberries added flavor to their food. Juniper berries are still used today to flavor gin. The seeds within the berries make attractive necklaces and bracelets when strung together. This is the Lowry ruins. These are the ancient Indians working on their buckets and their ancient uh, cement mixer and shovels. It says these are prehistoric farmers. Right, Spencer? <laughs> and this is their prehistoric Skylight and air conditioner. And prehistoric ladder and a prehistoric truck. The Lowry one. Look at these little rocks. Look at the camera. Oh, that's just showing, telling you about yeah. them. Well, would, they, no. would they have somebody uh, lay up there, six. like in case enemies Eight. came in? Sheila? Would they have somebody lay up there in case okay, enemies came in? Turn the panel to the left as you face And then if they came that's in, they shot thing. them? Mm -hmm. Detective like Gate explains the Kiva painting. Okay, panel inside the Kiva. Space the original painting and shells. There's their ventilation holes. Hmm. For the fires. Huh. Oh, the plaster remaining on the wall behind you is original and very fragile. Here's one. Please do not touch it. Archaeologists believe that the, Ana the Anasazi frequently decorated the interior walls of their homes with their art painted on plaster surfaces. Don't touch surfaces. the walls? Huh. Retrace your steps to stop seven and continue east toward. That's kind of petrified. Yes, I'm sure that's what that is. See, that's what at Chaco Canyon, the poles that would be sticking out like that mm -hmm. looked like petrified wood, and that's exactly what it was. When you got inside, they were the beams. Huh. Right yeah, that's one of the beams, I believe. The, okay. Yeah, that would it be says, a floor level right there. During each expansion and remodeling sequence, masonry construction techniques changed, perhaps due to regional trends or perhaps because of the ability preferences of the individual builders. Mm -hmm. The wall in front of you exhibits two different types of masonry work. It is believed that the masonry on the left was the outer wall of the original Pueblo and was built by masons from Chaco Canyon. Chaco-style masonry is characterized by the levering, layering of narrow slabs, the use of many small chinking stones, and frequent banding by deliberate use oh, of darker wow. sandstones. See those little tiny uh -huh. stones? Yeah, it says the abutting wall on the right. Huh? I noticed those in the Hovenly. In the abutting wall over here. The abutting wall on the right represents a latter addition of blocular local masonry style. 
As the initial Pueblo structure resembles Chacoan architecture, it may have been an early colony or trading center of the Chacoan Anasazi from what is now New Mexico. Oh, so they're saying this is an ancestors of the the Great Kiva probably attracted groups from the surrounding countryside, and it could also have been a common meeting spot where goods and ideas were exchanged. Ritualized contacts between the groups may have led to more widespread trade relations. The entrance to the Kiva is across from where you are standing. From that marker over there. So it's that over there. The entrance? Yeah, that is the entrance, because they're talking about the roof of the let's see. The roof of the structure was level with the ground surface. There you go. Hear me? Huh? The roof of the structure was level with the ground surface. An additional entrance may have been through a central smoke hole in the roof. Large axe-hewn beams rested on the masonry platforms within the kiva and supported the roof. The juniper logs that formed the roof have yielded tree ring dates of. 1106 to 1170 A.D. It says, being very careful, you can enter the kiva through the narrow entrance. Okay, now at 10. Is 10 down in there somewhere? The Kiva ceremonial pit there. Don't pull his tail off. Trying to catch a little bit. You're so cute, Samara. You're slobbing all over the place. Oh, yeah. What you it's doing that for? Exactly yeah, look. Look, look at rocks. Look at the rocks. See the rocks, Mara? Mara, that's a, this here. That's now, wood. Always See, wood. On that side? That's wood. I believe it's part of the divorce. Right? Yeah, wood. Do you say wood? Uh huh. Well, I wonder. You want to go over there? Look, look at Grandpa. Oh, I'll bet they pass. Boo. Say, say bye, bye, Grandpa. Considering a lot of Kevin. <laughs> say bye, bye, Grandpa. We'll have none of those raunchy sounds in this beautiful climate here. <laughs> Thing. See, this is kind of showing them here. Oh, Here's one right yeah. here. They're supposed to be. Well, isn't that before it? Before right they there? crack. Oh, you see that little thing? There's a window thing right there. There's a crack there, and then there's a window thing right yeah. there, a door. Oh my yeah. heck, Dad! Look at that up there. Yeah, I think I got it in that little thing right see underneath that. the rock. Yeah, over underneath that overhang. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna get this whole canyon here. Yeah. And you doing it close up? That's a kiva up there, like I said, camo. Up there? It's a kiva, he zoomed in with his camcorder.
Hey, so why you, is it above ground? Look? It's pretty big. Too. Yeah, you want to hold oh, Mars? Wait, am I filming? I don't know. I don't know, are you? <laughs> how many times I thought I found a ruin hiking out here, and because I saw square, and I finally get up there to it, and it's just a lousy hole in the rock. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I, I can definitely tell that that one is one. That over there, that there, and that over there. I'll let you know. <laughs> Yeah, look. Well, I'd, look. You see them all? That's the I like to hike, dude. Which one? The, one the, big one, the big one's there in the corner. Well, there's quite a few there because they're right up in there and then they come yeah. right on down. Yeah. So there was, if there was a way to get over there, they wouldn't let us get space. it going there because it's on the reservation? Yeah. Is that yeah. easy to get to? Which one? The big one. Okay. Do you see it? Climb up here, hit those rocks. I'll bet Probably you like anything they've got steps over there. I bet you they do too. Yeah. A lot harder than the ones over there, I think. How would they make steps? They uh, Ooh. dig them into the side of the What are you doing? Rocks? Don't take close ups of us, we'll look really gross. <laughs> you got you on here, dear. Well, I don't doubt that. You got your words. Good. Everybody, Nick, take note. She looks really gross. I didn't say I would look really gross. I said don't take close-ups of us. You saying I look really gross? Well, you're not behind the camera. You're not in front of the camera. There's single preserve rooms just below that yes, rim over there. You have to walk down canyon or up canyon through those talus slopes to get either to the mesa top or the canyon. Now, look around. The environment that you see is the environment of the five and six hundreds, not the twelve hundreds. This is a pinion juniper forest, and in this forest we have the big game elk, deer, mountain lion, black bear, and mountain sheep. And that's what the Anasazi were hunting while they were here during the five and six hundreds. There was some development on the mesa top as far as pit house development. And they were probably starting to grow some corn up here on the mesa top. But most population was down in the valley area, down in the Cortez area, Dove Creek area. They used this as an area of last resort. This landform does work to their advantage, but it also works to their disadvantage. This really isn't a mason, it's a cuesta. It doesn't have a table top. It's actually a landform sloping from the north to the south. It warms up faster than the valley, but it also has a very narrow band where you can actually get good corn. Anything further north is too high, the soil stays too cool. Anything further south is too dry. So the Anasazi usually congregated around this 7,000 foot elevation. Across the mesa, this is where we see most of the film. Now, during the 1200s, most of this tree line, it seems, was down. They had used it up. Fuel for building materials, probably as an export item. <coughs> they clear cut for fields, they clear cut for seed areas. Naturally, they had the lightning strike fires. You can see a burn across a fire scar over there on Moffitt Mesa. One we put out, we have to jump on everything that smokes here because. <laughs> If we don't, this wind will actually drive the fire. The last major fire here was in 89. We had to abandon the Mesa. We couldn't put it out with our high technology. Imagine what the Anasazi had to work with. And so probably by the 1200s, it looked a lot like that bird star over there. The grassland with a lot of sage and some corn, but very few trees. In the pollen analysis, we find a lot of corn, grass, and sage pollen, but hardly any of the juniper pinion pollen. And when they did take down the tree, they moved the environment further towards the northeast in that the large game went over towards the La Plata's and they lost a major source of iron. They also exposed their soil to a lot of wind erosion, a lot of water erosion. These people were starting to show the effects. There wasn't enough cropland up here to take care of the population. Good question. This particular area slabs, fruit tree house drops out of sand, cliff house drops out of large boulders sometimes. Now, the biggest problem here is that in an east facing alcove, you have a terrible winter. 
because you don't get any uh, warming sun. You get some morning sun, but this particular site actually faces to the northeast. So it gets no winter sun, and it gets all that blow-in snow. That's why this site is one of the last to be opened up in, the, in May, because sometimes we'll have snow in the back still melting. So why would anybody live here? Possibly this is one of the last sites to be used. Now our biggest question is, why would anybody live in an alcove when there were contemporary sites up on top? We can't look at these as defensive sites. There may have been some defense mechanisms out in the valley. We do see some evidence of violence out there. There is also some violence here. But it's usually not coming from the outside. It's coming from within the community itself. So the violence is already here. They're not hiding from it. We think instead that these are managed areas in that new groups coming in were allowed this space to put the pueblo so it wouldn't take up any arable land. Remember, when you have that tree lying down, you have that soil lifting up and moving out. It's also an area that had, they have been using for at least 400 years as a growing area. So it seems that they were also losing fertility in the soil. A lot of sites were storing more wild plants and less of the domesticated plants late in the occupation, as if the soil was giving up. So re-look at these sites. We have had to redefine some of the evidence that we first thought was very uh, informative, but we're starting to realize because of what we see in the Southwest, these aren't the peaceful farmers. They're not isolated. They're well known by the rest of their world as the Chichimex. The Chichimex or the Indians of Mexico were a violent people. Maybe that's what we're starting to see here in some of the evidence. Any questions right now? We need to go up the stairs, I think, guys. Yeah. 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 Mommy, you. What? We're happy now, huh? Look, Sophia. It might have been okay to sleep in the time that was crawling there and lay down, but it's not very tall. Did you get that? The coming up, you mean? Yeah. Me too. Me too. Go a little further. You don't have to go down it? Bean, go on in there. We're not allowed to, he said. Oh, really? Well, you can't he said we can't go in there. there. But you can look. You wouldn't want to go in there. It's not big. Hey. Is he, he's not, is he That's the master bedroom right there. Uh... Seep spring below. We have another seep spring on the south courtyard. The other saws he never used the north entrance. They had no ladders for the two foot blade. There was no access from this side. Now at first, and some have been here earlier, you hear an interpretation about how defensive this site was built. And it looks very defensive. It looks like you could get easily trapped here. In fact, you could if it was a defensive site because there's no way out on this north side. They thought that this two-story pueblo right here was the last defense line for anybody under attack. But think about living in an alcove. First of all, the only time you're gonna be living here, we think, is in the wintertime. Because in the summertime, you have to be out there. You can't be sitting here. You have to be out there hunting, you have to be out there tending the fields, guarding the fields, uh, gathering the wild plants. So probably during the summertime, very few actually were here. During the wintertime, you would be here if you had a better facing alcove. For instance, the power of the treehouse. And your enemy wouldn't be able to get to you anyway because there's too much ice and snow around. So, re-look at these sites, not as defensive sites. Also look at these sites as the day after they left. This site was never built this way at first. In fact, the first time, there were very few rooms here, but they were built on the alcove floor. That was during the 1100. And then the next group that came in during the 1240s, leveled everything, built the retaining wall back to a 12 feet, put this pueblo, and we think this group will ruin. And that's it. At least that's all we can see. And the only way we can date this site is by the wood that you see here. That's the only thing that was left. During the turn of the century, anybody with a bucket and shovel and some black powder could come in and dig any site they wanted and take whatever they found. So there was a lot of information that actually walked out of the site. 
the older stuff. We lost that information. We don't know where it is. There are a lot of private collections in here, by what was found here. There are a lot of public collections that haven't unboxed the material yet. We have some in the uh, museums back east that we go back and employ the box because they don't know what's inside. Now, the next phase of occupation was during the 1270s. So this particular site was hardly ever used. And in the 1270s, we built this two-story puzzle and the key to space on the other side. The 1280s <laughs> we built the tunnel, and we think the key to space to the south. In fact, we think this site became a ceremonial site, not a defensive site. First of all, you can't live here anymore. On this site, that was first explained at the children's area, there's no key to depth here, and you're not going to have children out here playing in the wintertime. It's too cold. You need to be pouring water here. And over on this side, especially. During the summertime, they would be up on top, and in the late fall, they'd come on down, but they'd stay over there on that side. That's where you had your key to depth, that's where you could live when it was cold at nighttime. So, what was this site used for? Possibly it was used as a living area at first. And once they built that two story pueblo, they blocked any sun over here, so these became storage in the front Or maybe key rooms. Let me show you what happened. It seems when they did build this two story pueblo, they had a door access here that allowed them to get to the north courtyard to the south courtyard. For some reason, they blocked that up and left the window, similar to the one that you see over here. They blocked that up and kept just this window. But what's really interesting, look at the lintel, the top of that window, yeah. and this doorway. Both are made up of juniper branches, as opposed to doorways that you see around here made up of stone windows. And maybe that juniper lintel defines what's beyond. We notice at other sites, when we have T-shaped doorways or rectangular shaped doorways, those that have juniper lintels usually lead to a key space, a tower space, or some type of plaza area. It's as if it defines what's beyond, as if it's a ceremonial site and that juniper may be a barrier to what? The spirits. I teach now those students. I see during times of stress, and we're starting to see it in border towns right now, more signs of the skinwalker. An actual phenomenon that they see, an actual phenomenon that they're scared to death of. And maybe that's what was happening here too. Because during the late of the 1200s, these people were noticing one thing. Their family groups were dying. And they couldn't figure out why. They had no previous types of environmental changes before. They had come to the Mesa before, but they never had come with such a population, and they never had come with such a deteriorating environment. Living in an alcove space is dangerous, not just because of ceiling fall, but because of your own health. If you have to live here, you would want to have one that's dry, not with a seat in the back. Because usually in the wintertime, they keep the dogs and turkeys packed, close to the seat, kept fires burning to keep things thawed out, to keep things alive. Very anemic, very calcium deficient, vitamin B deficient. These people were dying because they couldn't live with this population. We have some evidence of TB, we have some evidence of, of uh, grueling arthritis. And we may have been a genetic problem that was also enhanced by having a problem in the water. Water coming through this sandstone is good. We've tested it as pure. But any water collected in the lower formations and the mammoth formations in our prisons has too much selenium. And we can see in the big beam around it, drink from that water, that the skeletal structure is changing. It's developing strange nodules, that kind of thing. Uh, deforming the hood, deforming the earth, that kind of thing. Selenium has a tendency to actually collect around uh, bad joints, and that's what was happening here in the coral prisons. These people were suffering from arthritis, and they were being enhanced, and the pain would be enhanced by when their water was collected. Well, the Anasazi languages are vocal, zooming, tonal, and phrasing. The word Anasazi is a descriptive note word. It, it doesn't give you a tribal name. It means ancient enemy. When the Navajo came in here, they saw that there had been somebody here, not part of them, that could work the stone, that could farm, that could collect water from the rock. 
they realized that the Anasazi or the ancient enemy had a power far beyond theirs, and so they always guarded these sites. Traditional Navajo still believe, and traditionally you still believe that the Chibi is still here, the spirit of the Anasazi is still here, can rise up and destroy the clan group. And so they always protect the sites. I'll have grandmothers and grandfathers come through with their sons and daughters and their grandchildren, and they'll look, watch. They won't touch anything, but they will watch everybody. And then after, in some cases, they'll have a pollen ceremony leaving the site just to keep things quiet. Because they do believe that this place is still being used by the spirit. Now, what's kind of interesting is the Anasazi prepared the sites. A lot of early records tell about how the rooms looked as if people got up for a meal and walked away, as if they got up from the looms and walked away. Well, it wasn't that. This site was vacant over a period of time, probably a generation. But as the king group left the site, they would prepare the site for those that were still remaining, for the remaining spirit that was still buried here. So that's why this site always had the feel as if people got up and left. Well, they did, but they prepared the site for those that were still remaining. Now this particular area over here is a little more dangerous today than it was during their time. Both kivas would have had rooms on. The outside would be a flat plaza area. You would have an entryway in the middle of the room. You go down by a ladder into that space. Now when you're looking at a kiva space, you're looking at an evolved pit house. If you're going to have to survive here, you're going to survive there in the winter time. You're not going to try and keep the above ground rooms. It takes too much fuel. And the fuel that we think they were using was safe, a very smoky fuel. The rooms are very smoky, the back of the alcoves are very smoky, the kivas are very smoky. You can usually tell a kiva that's been restored by how clean the wall looks. Both are very clean, both kivas were restored heavily. You can see some of the last coat of plaster over on this particular kiva and how black it is. That's how black the interior was. They had a vent system, but it wasn't very efficient. Most kivas had an outside air vent pointing to the wind. Kivas point to the wind. They don't point because they have to point to the south for religious reasons. They point to the wind. And these kivas pointed towards the southeast. Uh, with a roof on this, you would have a low pressure chamber actually drawing air in. It put a wall between the air inlet and the fire pit so it wouldn't blow over the fire pit. And if they had to redesign, they would redesign. You have two kivas here redesigned. They had to point towards the east because it seems this particular room block blocked the air. And they had to get the air down into that space. This particular kiva didn't redesign everything. They kept the ventilation system working, but they kept the Sipapu in the original position, in the southeast, uh, northwest position. It's a small hole down on the floor that represents their spirit point, or their pathway. The kiva over here was completely redesigned, and in some cases, may not have been used as a ceremonial site. It may just be a living area for whoever was here. But what's real interesting is that all the kiva space is over here. That's atypical. Usually you have kiva space close to the living area, like you see at Cliff Palace or Spruce Treehouse, but not here. This is the kiva area. And in just a minute, we're going to go through the tunnel. And if you follow the original pathway down from the tunnel exit, you'd go down through two miles of canyon to another kiva that you'd have to pass through before you got to the palace slope to lead you to the Mesa Tunnel. So it, instead of that tunnel being a defensive mechanism, it's actually a pathway similar to what you see with the CC Parker. And what's also interesting when you go through that tunnel, look at the top of the tunnel. It's made up of juniper branches. Again, not a, not a defensive mechanism. Here you can see redesign. First of all, you see some logs sticking out. Last remains of roof lines. They left the log there as a drying rack. Over here, Lady asked about the blackened area on the top of the alcove. You can see there was probably a two-story pueblo over there, and the design of the wall track with the interior smoky room roof. They tore that all out and probably used the stone right here. Right at the very last, this probably became a ceremonial site. Those traditional that were still in the area were trying to recapture the power of nature. They weren't able to do it, though. And even these people finally had to leave. Why? Well, we had two things going on. One, there was a trade system that was telling them about better technology to the south and they could use it. That was irrigation. There was also at a time when hunters were starting to move in. And Navajos and Utes. And there was a lot of pressure from that. We have, we think, within the last few years, found a major battle between the Anasazi and between uh, the Ute or Navajo. We're not sure which. We have a lot of human remains out and we can't dig it. So we are just leaving the site. You also notice restoration during the turn of the century. Angle iron was used to bolt the site together. They didn't want to tear the rooms apart and redo them, so they just bolted everything. The thing is, if we remove it, we're afraid we're going to lose it because things are starting to sink. 
All that's practical here is becoming saturated. You can see evidence of that down here on the lower wall of the keeper right here. It's becoming wet. This room block right here is sinking. The room block that we uh, went behind coming into the north courtyard has sunk away from the alcove about six inches. We're starting to see movement even here. And that's why we've had to do some rescheduling at different sites. Any questions right now? Yes. Four to five thousand. Four to five thousand in the Mesa, maybe twenty here. Look at the Kiva space, realize it's a kin group area. How many would you like down there? Bring over there. Multiply it by the number of Kivas. Better than trying to count rooms, because not all the rooms are living rooms. Some are few, some are ceremonial, some are rare, some are just abandoned and used as a waste area. Yes? When did the Navajo date their origin? Well, their origin seems to be around the 1200s. In fact, what's kind of interesting, when the Navajo came in, they call this God del Jean. They call it the Crooked Juniper. Well, what's interesting is that that tree line was down during the 1200s. It takes about 100 years before another tree line at that time. <coughs> they may have come in during the 13th. And then when they saw that, they It means we're like you go in there and you hyperventilate because you think you're you know, really close in your area. Corona would get that way. Oh, we know right about that. You see there's an old one? Yeah. Dean, it's hyperventilating mm. like you blow in a sack. Oh, yeah. Dean, it's hyperventilating mm. like you start going to blow in a sack. I don't know about you, but I don't trust that. <laughs> Smith, it doesn't happen to everybody. Yeah. It's not going to happen to just common. It looks like they reinforced it, Kevin. Yeah. Hurry up, Dad. I'm going, I'm going. You're going, you're going. It's just calling right here. Huh? It's just calling right here. It's just calling right here. Move. Oh. <laughs> you would have to have this on film. <laughs> Sorry about that, Kevin. <laughs> My or Sheila, you guys are gonna have to put her back in this. Like, go to you. Oh. Okay. Oh, we got to get back on the pack. Oh, I noticed about lost your pants there. Oh. Kevin, you wanna do this one again? Oh. I didn't know that it was going to be this again. It didn't look like I'd been through that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Get out of here. kids no but oh. uh, <laughs> you're familiar huh I've seen a lot on tours <laughs> <laughs>
Down mom do. Got up. Spencer I think she's back there. there. Evidently. He was in front of me, so he must be. Did you get the boost? Yes, he fell off. Thanks, Drake. Huh? How do you attach that? Oh. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> How can you see them? Blake in Texas. Arizona. Chisel or something? Did you hear your son? I heard him. Oh, yeah. Oh. Look at that. Now, see, that's what I should have brought. The stroller. Uh huh. Got in the car. Oh, there's one right over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, that's cool. Oh, that's so good. Okay, let's go. Who's that? The large three-story wall before you fronts about 20 rooms each, approximately six by eight by five and a half feet. Uh, probably one or two people lived in each of these rooms, which was primarily used as bedrooms or as work areas in unpleasant weather. On favorable days, the families lived and worked in the courtyards, on the rooftops, and on the balconies, which extended from the front of the building. The original wooden support. <coughs> Oh. Look at this. Kevin? <laughs> of a balcony can be seen along the top of the way back of the back there. wall. Oh, Gives you an idea how deep it goes in there. Entrance to the rooms was gained through the rectangular and T-shaped doorways. The shape was apparently a matter of personal preference, each type having advantages and disadvantages during cold weather, animal hides, or sandstone slabs, such as the one leaning against the wall, were used as doors. That, that is a sandstone oh, yeah. slab. Uh -huh. Or the ladder down into the kiva there, huh? That's, yeah. that's how they would get into it. Most, the kivas, See, they had a roof on them. Oh. See, this is what it would look like if the kivas were covered at the other yeah. place. Well, just wait. We're not ready to come there yet, son. <laughs> look at this one some more. Remember when we were, when we were in the balcony? Well, not well, if they let you, just hold your horses. You gonna read this? Number five is where we're going. Oh yeah. Okay. See the design. Sheila. Look. See the design drawn on the back wall. Can you see it? See where four is? Go up and to the to your right just a little bit. And you see it right on that back wall. It's in a square and then it has lines. No, that's what the first thing it says about four is the three story building to your left. Now what is the design drawn on the back wall? There's something written there. What is it? Freddie was here, 1092. Wow. Hey, you're not going to get camera, are you? Yeah. 
You probably buy some good fish. Hey Gary, you can go down there. Me, me and um. Oh, how many Lance people are down there? Me and Lance have already been down there. Oh. I have to wait in line. I see Kevin's glasses. <laughs> That's all I see is your glasses. I don't know the name of the airbag. They're fired. They're fired. In here? They're fired right there. In that hole. Right there. Uh-oh. Come here. Come here. Here's your keys back there. Look. Look. That's what I brought you, Mara. Look. Look. Grandma's got a hold of it. Oh, you're gone. When you're out of the room, you think Hey, Sheila. You need to go down into that Kiva. Yes, it is awesome. Did you take Mara down there? Uh-uh. I don't think you'd want to let you hand her down or something. Yeah. I, I was just wondering if you were going to, if you did. <laughs> We're gonna, he's gonna take a picture of us. Over here are the food storage areas. Oh wow, yeah, look at that dog at the uh, And there, there's another fire that's glowing. Where? See this big pot with the spout kind of thing on it? Right behind it, there's a fire pit, fire pit with the flower the, and the fire. Hey, is this one of those pits that they go in? That must be some kind of a grain that they're trashing there on that blanket thing. I never knew they had dogs back then. Oh, yeah. I'm sure they won't wear yeah. toes. Look at the staircase he's coming down from the top of the mesa. Yeah. Oh, Mom, look, it's a little drama. Mm -hmm. See the little dog? Oh, well, this is definitely starting growing corn. Lots of turkeys. They did? Did they? Dad, I can't see. Okay, I got it. Mm -hmm. There's a cat trying. To, there's a cat trying to chase a squirrel. See him on that tree. There's a squirrel up there. That's a dog. Daddy. Oh yeah, there is. There's a dog and there's a squirrel. We didn't have cats. I don't think. Spencer. I'm sorry, Spencer. And the boys. Oh look at the puppy that got stuck in the hole. See him? Mm -hmm. There's one that's trying to get a turkey. Oh right. Looks like that guy got a rabbit. Yeah, there's a little for a few minutes. 